Hello, hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark. It's a bit of a weird one today. It's a lovely Friday afternoon. The week is very nearly over. I'm only just getting around to making a second video of the week, and I have opinion. So, we're not doing anything technical today. Uh, I want to talk about this. There's a little article that um, Bill Inman, one of the fathers of data warehousing, one of the big, big, big voices in terms of data management, uh, has recently put out, basically saying that data lakes are a giant pile of buzzwords and are no good to anyone. And yeah, I've got a few opinions about that. So I want to step through some of the some of the points uh, that Bill's actually making in the article, and some of the points where I quite strongly disagree. I thought that'd make a fun Friday afternoon, so let's just have a little look at what's going on in here. Um, before we get to the actual article, before we start stepping through, as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you disagree with me. Feel free to make a rebuttal. Feel free to let me know where the compromise sits in the middle. But again, I don't think this argument's going to go away any, anytime soon. I just needed a bit of a, a voice in response. So let's go from here. Okay, I'll ping the uh, article around so everyone else can uh, take a read and make your own opinions. I just want to kind of uh, talk through it as we go in terms of some of the things I disagree with. Um, sentence. So big data started out as a replacement for a data warehouse. That is a strong, strong opening statement. Yes. In many ways, big data is now becoming a replacement for the data warehouse. In my opinion, it was never originally a response. Data warehousing has been around for a long time, as have big data technologies. And yes, they grew up as a particular response to data challenges that Data Warehouse wasn't meeting. So we had data that was too big to fit inside what the technology was available at the time. We were trying to get a one particular value. I want to crunch through all of this data to answer a specific question. Now, for me, it's a fundamentally different question that Data Warehouses are trying to do. If we're trying to build a Data Warehouse, we're trying to build a a all-encompassing data model that can be used to answer a whole range of different business questions. If you're building a data warehouse to answer one question, you're doing something inherently wrong. So this idea that big data only came around to challenge the role of the data warehouse, I disagree with. I think there were other drivers that forced the creation and the evolution of big data. Now, these days, absolutely 100%, people are starting to challenge the data warehouse and people are using big data tools instead of warehousing and there's the lines blurring. I disagree about that being the origin, but that's fine, you know. I'm fairly new on the uh, the block, so kind of maybe maybe I wasn't around back then, and maybe those drivers were slightly different. Okay, so he talks a lot about the big data vendors. Uh, really, doesn't seem to like the big data vendors, um, and this is a point that I actually do agree with. So the big data's got pushed back from essentially having a large distributed file store, um, and they decided that you need to apply some architectural constructs. So the big data vendors came up with a data lake. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's one of the interesting things. So one of the things that I've always liked is certainly my journey around big data is that it did start off as fairly wild west. Because people were building these big data solutions to kind of answer one question, and then suddenly they had 10 different solutions all piled together, and then realized they could reuse that to answer many, many different questions. Yeah, absolutely. They've suddenly encountered architectural problems when it reached a point of organic growth in the scale of enterprise businesses. Of course it did. And they came up with architectural patterns to resolve that problem. 100% completely agree. That's that's how technology works and evolves. Um, so again, talking through some stuff, talking about big data infrastructure. Um, and again, kind of there's a lot in here, which is, again, using that <laughs> garbage dumpster smell over time. Yeah, absolutely. That whole concept of the data swamp, the data lakes, if you don't look after it, starts to be a whole muddle and a mess. And the, the confusion I have here is that's where data warehouses came from. The whole point of data management architectures was because people started building things like RDMSs. They started putting lots of data in there. They started losing control and being unable to find things. And so you come up with an architecture that you layer over the top to provide structure. You know, you, architectural patterns exist. That's, that's kind of the point. And so the argument, yes, when people were using lakes without architectural patterns, they went wrong. And people still do it. People still do it badly. 
the same as people still have databases that they don't manage and it goes badly. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. If there's a, a solution you build and you don't have an architectural pattern or a framework approach, it's probably gonna go a little wrong. Uh, to say that's just how data lakes work is an entire misnomer. The same way as that's not how databases work. Um, 100%, yeah, if you don't have metadata, you don't have a structure, your data lake's not gonna work. It's an absolute fair point. Okay, um, and then discovery, the made finding data is not easy enough. You need data you can rely on, you need analysis. And again, all of this is true. What I disagree with um, is the argument that all of this is something that people in the data lake world have invented, that they've gone through this evolution pattern and suddenly realized, oh my God, you need data management patterns. Oh, how do we actually find data? No, it's not really true. Yes, there's uh, the point on the big data side when you had people who were in that real blinkered, I'm a data engineer providing some data to a data scientist. I'm not building an enterprise data model and I've just got a problem. Sure. They, when they reached a point, they need to look elsewhere and find alternative architectures out in industry. Um, those of us who are adopting lake-based models to do modern warehousing on, we're inventing these patterns and processes. We're not suddenly going, oh, I've got a problem where data's changed. How could I possibly manage that? We have this wealth of experience from warehousing, from the evolution and the maturity of data models in the modern world, that we can then apply onto the technological structure. So again, I entirely agree that this is uh, basically the blind stumbling through uh, a new land, suddenly having to invent the wheel. It's people arrive somewhere new and go, oh, I can use a wheel for that. Python joke, yeah, getcha. Um, and yes, yes, that is, that is exactly what people were doing. Now, the argument then turns into a by applying warehousing patterns, you're losing all the value of the lakes. And I completely disagree. So this comes into a fundamental misunderstanding of what lakes are for. So this article tends to assume that the whole driver of data lakes was people didn't want the governance and the work of managing their data well. And so they went onto a data lake where you don't need any controls. You don't need security. You don't need patterns and processes and you can just do what you want. And they had a bad time and then had to learn how to do things. Now that I'm afraid is entirely incorrect. People adopted lakes because the actual underlying technology of warehouses, the requirements to specify schema up front, the size limitations of being able to fit data into an actual warehouse without paying astronomical sums up front is just not there. It's not good enough. They are not agile enough for what people are trying to do today. Now, saying that you're gonna switch the underlying technology of your data model, of your data warehouse as a architectural concept from a relational data store to a lake, that doesn't distract, that doesn't uh, detract from what the whole point of having a warehouse is. And so that's why I agree that there's a big, big difference here saying a data warehouse means you're in a database and means you're working in a very old fashioned way a data lake means you don't have any controls and any governance and any security, and therefore you're going a different direction. And that's just fundamentally not true anymore. We have, we're taking, what are the really good management processes? What are the lessons learned from decades of warehousing? What are the data management principles that you have to adhere to in order to deliver an auditable, secure, well-managed data model that the enterprise can trust? But, what are the new facets and features? What are the technological advances? What is the agility and flexibility that switching over to a lake can give us? And what is that pattern that we can find that keeps all of the good stuff from the processes and architectural principles and allows us to harness the new stuff? That's the whole point. And so, yeah, as I said, opinions today, full of opinions. Um, and yes, data, big data and data lake, there is such a thing as architecture. Definitely patronizing. Um, and what it actually sounds is, so it sounds like essentially there's a, a little, a little bitterness here uh, in terms of essentially how warehousing, the traditional warehousing art, the traditional tradition, uh, discipline of warehousing, it kind of sounds like it's been belittled, it's been dismissed a lot by a lot of the modern swings. So people talking about data lake house, people talking about the modern data warehouse, which is part lake, part uh, relational warehouse. And all the people kind of just pushing that. 
and especially all the big data vendors, so all your Snowflakes, all of your Databricks, your Dremios, all of the back to the tools, they're obviously all pushing their uh, current tools as the answer to all these problems. There's not one of them that doesn't need architecture and good data management and good data discipline to actually achieve it. I completely agree with that point. That That is true. The art of being a data modeler, being a data designer, designing an enterprise data platform still has all of that rich history. To say that the new world, these new te technologies dismiss all of that old stuff and are completely irrelevant, therefore, just seems a bit naive, honestly. So yeah, I thought I would uh, just step through and kind of just share my opinions on it and just kind of say it's it's such a pity that there is that uh, dismissal of the new technology stack by a lot of the the old vanguard of the um, the warehousing world, the people, you know, kind of were pushing and kind of, you know, kind of designing some of those original concepts and principles. I kind of like just seen, oh, we've got this amazingly... Um, this amazing potential of a new tech stack. We've got this coming together of different disciplines, people from the big data world, people from the traditional warehousing world, people from software engineering, actually coming together to go, you know what, we can do things a lot better than we used to. Now, don't get me wrong, warehousing has a ton of problems. It is far, far too slow the way people traditionally design them. It doesn't rely, it doesn't actually lend itself nicely to DevOps principles and actually good agile software management. There's a load of problems in warehousing. But again, just because these days I do most of my stuff in legs. I do use Spark for most of my data processing. That doesn't mean we don't learn from all of those good things that we've had in the past. It doesn't mean I don't love to actually apply Kimball uh, in terms of solid chain dimensions, in terms of junk dimensions, in terms of good data modeling for reusable data mods that I can produce as a star and then put into another technology. I can live in a lake. Absolutely really, really good to live in the lake, especially with the advent of management tools such as Delta. Now, again, just because we've got a, a file format in Delta that actually applies things like some ACID transactions, it applies some of the transaction logs, it's taking some of those good things about relational database and putting it into a lake. Does that mean lakes have lost and actually we should have always been using relational database? No. It means that they were always doing good things in the database world and actually what we want to do is take the best of all the various different approaches and get the best for the actual consumer, the best for the enterprise, the best for the people using it. It's not like you've won and I've lost. It's not a, those people are irrelevant, we don't need to talk to them anymore. It's saying, how are we as an industry going to advance? So I, I obviously, as you might have been able to tell, disagree with a lot of the, not the message, but the tone and the approach. The approach is saying, I don't like how they handle it, therefore they're wrong and we don't need to look at their argument. Just seems a bit naive and that's why we have so many factions and so much infighting in the data industry. My tool's better than yours. Uh, your dashboarding tool isn't quite as good as mine. It's kind of how people work. And it's kind of because of these kind of people who are entrenched in their camps. Was I in there going, you know what? Show me the different best bits of technology and then we can go, hey, that's a really smart idea. Why don't we do that over there, which, where we've got a different technology stack we can make it live on? Fantastic. Why not actually bring things together and think the best way forward? But, you know, that's just me. So, yes, a little bit of a rant today, but, you know, it's good to get these things off your chest. It's good to <sighs> clear the thoughts for the weekend. Um, let me know what you think. Let me th know if I'm entirely wrong there and actually, you know what, I should be throwing away legs and... Going back to a relational database, let me know if there's actually a different version of that coming together, the happy medium that you think we should be looking at. So it's actually, it's not legs, it's not warehousing, it's something else. Maybe you're a data mesh person, maybe you are all about virtualization, maybe there's other ways to go. But it's good to talk about these things, it's good to get them out in the open. So that's all I'm doing today. Just a little quick rant to share my outrage and my opinions to kick the weekend off. Otherwise, as usual, let us know if there's any topics you want us to cover in the future. If you come across any, inter any interesting articles and you want my opinion, let me know. And otherwise, I'll catch you next time and say, I've always been a Kimball guy. <laughs> See you later.